Hello and welcome to uh, my latest Patreon video. <laughs> it's appropriate uh, video really because uh, it's incredibly hot here at the moment in England. So apologies if you can hear the traffic outside but the window is open to try to cool down the room. Uh, we are working on uh, Adrax Agatone's uh, Drake cloth uh, coat uh, cape today um, and you will see that it's, it's already had like a little bit of a um, a, a wash of very very thin paint uh, down on it. Uh, so that is uh, it's Mephiston Red. It's actually the, it's the paint that you can see in the top left of the palette. Uh, so on the palette we have uh, Mephiston Red with a, with black. Uh, it's fifty fifty mix. Um, Mephiston Red, uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, Vallejo Orange Fire, and then Flash gets yellow uh, from Citadel, um, and then just black paint underneath it. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just kind of glazing in a little bit of shadows um, on the cloak. Now painting cloaks is is uh, is is really really good fun, um, but you have to pay attention to where the light is on cloaks uh, a little bit more than you would expect. Um, so anyway, I said that um, it's had a coat of uh, a very very thin down coat to start with, and that thin down coat was that 50/50 mix of Mephiston and um, black. Uh, it's just to give it a, um, a an all over kind of a, a red tint to it. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm just going around and any surface which is facing downwards, so it wouldn't be catching the light. Um, the light is obviously coming from up, uh, up top. It wouldn't be catching any light. Um, any surface that's facing downwards, I am just giving a quick glaze of black just to darken that down to create some nice contrast to the cloak. Um, so the 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 paints on the wet palette um, now the, <laughs> it's interesting at the moment it's uh, at the moment in england it's incredibly hot and humid so paint is drying very very quickly so my wet palette is very very wet um you you'll see as we get through the video that the wet the, the paper on the wet palette kind of starts moving a little bit um and that's because literally the the, the paper is sat on a very thick film of water <laughs> so it's almost like it's sat in a bowl of bowl of water the, the, the foam isn't really there um, and as such these these paints aren't actually watered down at all on there um, you'll notice that as I do take paint from the uh, the wet palette I'm taking it right from the edge which is uh, the most diluted part of the blob if you like uh, so as you get towards the center and towards the top of the of the paint droplet, um, it will have more. It will be more concentrated paint, um, if you like. And then, as you uh, the further out you go, uh, the the more watered down it gets. So you you want to be w using watered down paint anyway. So, but um, yeah, because it's a very very wet wet palette, the paper is is uh, thinning down the paint very quickly. Right, let's get on with the painting. So. We have Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. They're the two reds that we're going to be kind of working predominantly with. Um, and you'll see that the cloak has a lot of creases. And uh, one of the first things that I'm making sure that I'm doing is uh, getting all the uh, Drake scales picked out in in a red. Uh, whether that's uh, Mephiston Red, which is the darkest red that we're going to use, um, or Evil Sun Scarlet, if it's facing a little bit further upwards. Now. Um, we're also making sure that we're only highlighting like the the top the top parts of it so again we're working with light volumes again so the top top parts of the drake scales um the top as in the parts which are nearest the light so if you think about the sun shining down on these that the top of the scales will be a bit brighter than the bottom of the scales particularly as they're curling around on the on the uh, on the cloak and they and that curl um, kind of curls into the shadows so I'm only there. You go. You can see the paper uh, moving already as I'm as I'm uh, taking the paint off the off the wet palette. So I'm I'm swapping between Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. Now it doesn't look on the wet palette as the, as though there's much of a tonal difference, but the Evil Sun Scarlet is very it's a very nice, rich, bright red. Um, I I do love painting reds, and it's a, it's a, it's a very easy color to paint uh, with just those three colors really: the Mephiston Red and Black. A fist on red, and then Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, just those colours will get you get you uh, a, the vast majority of the way to painting red. Um, and uh, obviously, I like painting with with uh, some good high contrast. So 
we're keeping it uh, this dark reddy black um, in the in the recesses as well. The orange and the yellow are there because salamanders are flamey, flame related, and uh, dragons and everything. So um, that's where the the orange and the yellow will come in and just uh, give a little bit more saturation and brightness to the scales. So we're working around. We're we're picking up uh, when we get to the top of a. Um, a crease on the cape uh, we're making sure that this is actually a really good example here the top side of the crease is very bright and then the scales that are curling over the other side where the cloak curls down into the shadows uh, you can see firstly we're not highlighting them as bright um, and secondly we're not we're only highlighting like the top side of the, of the scales um, so these scales here that we're just kind of highlighting now, so we, we, we've gone back in, we've got some Mephiston red here uh, because that doesn't need to be as bright, but we're, we're still leaving that contrasting darker spot on the on the bottom half of the uh, of the scale uh, to keep the contrast up and to keep that uh, the the light direction. Um, I'm, I'm always trying to keep on the uh, idea of where the light is coming from um, and uh, how much of that is going to be catching on uh, particularly things like cloaks because you've got that uh, that much uh, ripples and everything running through the cape um, so th these are a really good practice um, into kind of understanding where the light is going to be landing and things where it's going to be picking up where it's going to be highlighting um, where it's going to be brighter um, the easiest way is to hold the cloak vertically um, and have a look at it and have a look at what you can see so uh, if if I was holding this, if I was trying to explain this um, from a sense looking at this cloak now, if you were to hold it and look down on it from the top, uh, so where the where the flame is uh, on the top of the backpack, if you were to look down on it from there, anything that you can see, any surface that you can see from that angle needs to be the brighter um, Evil Sun Scarlet or even uh, even the orange. Um, and then anything that is underneath that, anything as it curls around and faces downwards, uh, you don't need to highlight as much. Um, it still needs highlighting because uh, you're going to have bounce highlights everywhere and things like that. Don't just leave it black, but it just needs to be a different, uh, a different, oh, what's the word? Um, a different intensity of of, uh, of highlighting. So this is a yeah this is a really really nice cloak to to work on as well. Um, you don't have to worry about softening uh, material blends in or anything. You can just work on the the uh, the idea of uh, where the light is uh, landing on these small little scales. Um, so if you can if you can get hold of this model, this is a really really good um, little model to to practice like kind of light directions on a cloak. Um, and then when you when you kind of get the idea of how this looks at the end um, you can try to uh, try to pass that on um, uh, when you do other robes and cloaks so a lot of the time as well when you do look at cloaks like this there are going to be in in the creases not all the creases are going to be dark um, it's it's more going to be the side of the crease which is going to be dark so the side which is curling and facing downwards is going to be darker um, because the light is still going to be able to get into the recess um, because of the because of how how it's situated uh, in terms of it being vertical um, I'm getting my words in a, in a in a bit of in a bit of a twist here but hopefully you can uh, understand what I'm talking about um, but uh, yeah making sure that the, the easiest way uh, and definitely with looking at uh, looking at this Drake's Drake uh, co cloak as well uh, the easiest way is, is to make sure that you're picking out the, the high spots. Now, I'm using a size uh, 0 brush. Um, I think this is still a size 0. I did start with a size 1 and then I swapped. Um, I'm using a size 0 brush and I just want you to, uh, to, to pay attention to how much paint I actually have on the brush tip. Um, there's not a lot there. Uh, when I go to the wet palette I don't pick up very much. And uh, that um, um, allows you to very much control how much uh, how much paint you're. And we're just losing the focus. We'll get the focus back in a second. I think I noticed it in a second. Um, 
the uh, small amount of paint on the brush just allows you to be able to control how much you put on um, put on the model and uh, also it's going to stop stop any kind of blobbing or uh, any blobs that uh, appear on the on the model as you're painting as well there we go I'll sort of the focus out uh, so this this these little bits here they that we're painting that's in what you would consider the recess but because it, that recess is still facing upwards it's still going to catch the light so these scales here even though they're on the the curl of the of the robe of the cloak um, they're still going to be catching the light because they're still facing up on the other side of that curl those little dots and the and the uh, there we go now we've got the size zero um, the little dots and the, the smaller scales um, they're facing down so they're not going to be as bright and you'll see as we as we're as we are uh, moving over this little ridge I'm only painting the top sides of all the of all the um, scales um, to, 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 to make sure that we are uh, showing that uh, light direction nice and strongly um, now the tiny little dots because they're tiny they're going to be reflecting the light a little bit differently so we can we can kind of pick those out and show those a little bit better anyway um, so they go they go quite quite bright quite quickly um, because they're small so small things are going to be the, are going to be, have a brighter uh, sharper highlights sort of thing so uh, the little dots will be uh, will, will quite easily be highlighted some of them even up to uh, orange um, but uh, yeah, this this recess now um, that we're painting there, that 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 plane is the part of the cloak which is facing downwards. So we're being very particular about how we're highlighting. Uh, so this edge is now getting caught with orange, but the orange is not going to go anywhere near um, parts of the cloak which are facing uh, downwards as it as it ripples around. Um, and then also a little bit of a uh, a water bubble appearing on that. So we get rid of that. So again, it's just these top top corners, um, and then parts on the uh, on the top top of the robe uh, are being picked out a little bit more prominently. And th and this again, it plays into the the high contrast look of this model, um, making sure that uh, the light contrast and the light the light direction is uh, is helping tell the story a little bit. And uh, we can get a little bit of OSL on this, so maybe the top of the robe. Is going to be a little bit closer to the fire so the top of that robe is going to get caught a little bit um, but um, not too much so uh, we don't have to worry about the flames uh, casting a shadow or casting any light onto the onto the cloak uh, really it's going to be uh, the, the the osl from the flames is going to be re pretty much restricted to just the top of the um, the backpack and then that edge uh, again the edge is going to be caught up a little bit more because it's thin so it's going to be catching a little bit more. So you'll notice I'm, I'm picking out the the edges of the uh, of the smaller scales with orange. Um, again, these are the ones which are facing upwards. And then as we're curling around that, um, we, we, we're kind of leaving those alone, and they're going to be just red. But it's an awesome looking cloak. I do like it. And we do have uh, yellow on the wet part as well. So we, this is this is fiery orange, and we're just kind of going through and, and hitting some hitting some hot spots, hitting some some uh, some areas which are uh, definitely either pointing upwards um, or have a very prominent uh, edge. So these uh, these scales, uh, the the spikes on the the ridge uh, down the centre here, we we're, we're trying to brighten brighten the whole thing particularly on the top side so even though we're highlighting this edge here as well uh, we're going to fill in that top side and just try and make that top side a little bit uh, a little bit brighter a little bit more red uh, it's a bit too contrast at the moment the contrast can come in as we, as we start drifting out into the uh, onto the underside um, so you'll see we've got the mephiston and black mix here just to to drop in and just lift lift the color saturation of these spikes red I, w I would probably say uh, either red or blue are the not easiest but the coolest colors to get very striking 
um, results with like high contrast results like so this is a very high contrast finished um, I think um, uh, red and blue uh, just themselves innately um, are very good for for getting this nice high contrast finish so if you want to practice this nice high contrast um, then then a red or a blue um, kind of pays it kind of works really well with that particularly using these color as well uh, colors as well these paints uh, so Mephiston red is a fantastic paint uh, it's got very very good coverage and the same with Evil Sun Scarlet as well so I would highly recommend even if you don't like painting with Games Workshop colors getting getting at least Mephiston red um, because then you can mix in um, black to darken it down so you get that nice nice rich brown ready brown and then you can bring in a, a brighter red if you want to use the Vallejo ones uh, blood red's very good for Vallejo it's just not quite as rich as the evils and scarlet now you could if you if you wanted you could um, you could push this a different way and uh, start highlighting with a pinker color um, uh, and I think actually the if you look at the heavy metal version of this, uh, they they have started kind of putting a little bit of uh, bleach bone into the red and highlighting it a little bit more pink. Um, so you can, you can go that way if you want. Uh, just be careful because as soon as you do start mixing in uh, bleach bone um, and highlighting it up just a little bit more pale, you do lose a little bit of the saturation. Um, so uh, yeah, just be careful if you if you are trying to do that. Don't go don't don't go too pink with the highlight. The highlights uh, when you when you start getting that kind of shade in just need to be very very uh, selective. Um, in the same way as when I'm highlighting here with the yellow, I'm being very selective where I highlight the yellow because it can very very quickly override the look. So these um, these little spots, the little kind of scale postule popsules. Um, again, they're very small, they're very sharp, um, so they're going to be catching catching the light very quickly. So this is my fist on red that's going down as a very very quick base coat. I'm trying to do it reasonably reasonably neatly on these, uh, you don't have to worry too much because the highlight is going to be so sharp. Um, it will kind of disguise any any uh, mistakes or slips. Uh, and then obviously as we get up to the top of this cloak here we're going to start getting Evil Sun Scarlet pretty much the whole way across all of the um, scale which is then highlighted up to, uh, to, to the orange and the yellow um, just because it's nearer the light and it's facing upwards there's no curves in there or anything I haven't got ma as many shadows but we're, all, we're always trying to keep those light volumes towards the top um, towards the top sides of the scales which are facing up towards the light so always always be thinking where your light is coming from uh, and then keep that light volume towards that point if the light was coming from underneath then you would be highlighting the light volumes um, favoring the uh, the lower side of the scales um, and uh, that's <laughs> that is a, a really fun little kind of trick that you can do not really a trick but a little practice that you can do I'm doing a uh, a 54 mil scale model at the moment which is almost sat on like a pool of lava so he's got under um, under lighting uh, red under lighting as if he starts uh, from the uh, kind of the lava pools that he stood on so everything underneath um, is inverted and is uh, shining red Another thing when we are painting in this kind of high humidity, just make sure that you are cleaning your brush very, very regularly. Um, um, just rinse it, rinse it in a cup of water, um, and dry it off on the uh, on a piece of tissue paper, and then I, I do lick my brushes just to keep the point. But um, you can also just drag them and twist them on a piece of paper to keep the point as well. Um, but uh, do do keep going and and uh, cleaning it off because you'll notice as you as you keep painting in uh, this heat and the humidity uh, you will get little uh, spots of dried paint right on the tip which uh, occasionally you'll just have to pull off with a fingertip so just kind of blending a little bit of the orange uh, into the top side of uh, these uh, spine scales down the center so grabbing the uh, grabbing the orange and just kind of edge edging anything that's uh, 
again just just facing up uh, following and making the highlights just a little bit smaller so if you've put a nice red highlight on there um, a chunky red highlight then you can just make the next highlight this orange highlight just a little bit smaller inside it keeping it to the edge uh, you won't have an edge highlight that uh, that drifts anywhere further um, and then this is the yellow so like I said we're using yellow incredibly selectively um, some of the larger and sharper parts um, so definitely the tips of all the um, of all the spines um, and then some of the larger scales uh, or just the scales which are which have an edge which are pointing very very much upright um, so that like for instance this is not going to go anywhere anywhere near an edge of a scale which is facing downwards or uh, in the recess down there it's going to be very much reserved for the upwards facing scales um, and as the, as the cloak starts curling around we can just kind of leave those to just the oranges and the reds uh, and that way you end up with a very, very good strong light direction which uh, has some really cool contrast and makes the makes the cloak feel a little bit more alive And the, uh, the the benefit to using Mephiston Red and Evilson Scarlet on the wet palette that's slightly watered down um, is that uh, they, the the coverage is just just translucent enough that you can kind of blend um, and you can get two different colours with two different layers. So the first layer you put on will dry a little bit more translucent and a little bit darker, and then the second layer you put on will kind of make that colour a little bit more opaque. Uh, and we'll start helping bringing that uh, light direction coming out. Uh, I, I do kind of want to find a uh, an alternative uh, orange. Um, the the fire orange from uh, sorry orange fire from Vallejo is a little bit funny to work with occasionally. Um, just make sure there are a couple of um, a couple of Vallejo paints which need a very 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 good shake uh, every now and then, and uh, this is one of them. Um, which is fine. Um, red and orange and yellow paints are notoriously bad for, for coverage. Uh, we're very, very lucky that we have Mephist on red and Evil Sun Scarlet in our repertoire at the moment. Um, it wasn't always like that. Um, they've, uh, um, they've, they've always been some, some kind of tricky colours to work with. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you're using orange fire, just make sure you shake it very, very well, get it properly mixed up before you put it on the wet palette. Uh, and be aware that uh, when you do get it occasionally the uh, the medium can separate quite quickly out of it so uh, yeah getting towards the end of this so we've got the evil sun scarlet just picking out the uh, the, the top part again uh, so this is the cloak that we've got uh, coming up over the shoulder the uh, other part of the cloak carries over onto uh, the front half of the body uh, which we've already painted so we're going to have to make sure that when we put it together these colors match so I'll be uh, I'll be doing that later off, off camera uh, but it will just be the same uh, same principles um, but just making sure that uh, as it goes over the shoulder um, the uh, the scales um, are uh, the, the base tone of the scales is the same so that they can match between the two Again, this uh, nice yellow tip. It does look a little bit harsh, uh, but you can you can blend it uh, blend it down a little bit if it uh, if it does get a little bit too much. But, uh, I think the uh, I think the yellow looks quite quite good once you see it all in person. Once you see it all finished, just adds that little bit more contrast to it. Adds the fire if you like. Mm. more edges so this is a perfect angle actually to see where the edges are going to be catching the light so this is the angle that I was talking about earlier where you can look down from the top um, and uh, and really see where um, what parts are going to be catching the light so uh, as you're holding it like that you can see the curls as they as they curl underneath um, they're, they're, they're a little bit darker under there so that they're, they're they're cast in the shadow And this is this is one of the easiest ways of um, of 
of painting and understanding where the light is going to be um, because light travels in straight lines so if you can't if you're holding it like this and you can't see a part of the model then the light can't see it either so if you're looking if you try to look at a model um, from where you want the light to be coming from which nine times out of ten is going to be from the top um, occasionally I well not occasionally I, I do tend to do mine from the top and to the uh, to the right hand side uh, so camera right um, so just holding the model and looking at it from where the light is going to be shining uh, imagine you're a uh, imagine you're a a torch or something looking down and that's going to be the easiest way to see where the light is going to be landing because it, it's not going to be able to go around corners so anything that you can't see is going to be in shadow so that's the uh, they're the parts that you need to keep a little bit darker so yeah that's actually a really good angle to be looking at this from Very very small amounts of uh, paint on the brush. That's probably the, the biggest tip actually. If you're if you're just starting out, just make sure that you have good good control over how much paint is actually on your brush, um, and start having an understanding of how much paint you need on your brush to achieve uh, the coverage that you want on uh, on different parts of the model. Again, these small little postules that are sticking out—they're going to be—they're uh, going to be quite bright, so they've just been uh, highlighted up once more. And uh, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, so the next video we will be putting, um, uh, turning turning this round, uh, and we'll be doing a little bit on his face uh, before we would go back to the armor and uh, refine that green. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that video. And uh, I will see you next time. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you very much.